Hello, I'm FGX Toy Cat, and welcome back to episode 416 of my Minecraft Xbox Update Adventures Let's Play. This is the Let's Play where I give you a weekly update as to what's been going on in my survival world, as well as life, the universe, and everything in between those three things. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the smelting I've been doing in the background, because you might not notice this, because it's mostly after I do a big mining trip, usually on camera or something like that. Uh, but basically, I have a bunch of like different ores all around the, uh, the place that are slowly being smelted up, and some mutton too, apparently. But I have a lot of, uh, you know, like ore, ore Always being smelted like kind of in the background as I do other tasks and the reason for that is because I've done a lot of uh, mining streams recently and as a result of that I end up with a lot of at least in my opinion a lot of different uh, you know like different ores like iron ingots and gold etc and uh, yeah this isn't a lot to a lot of people and I want to talk about the interesting thing about that because a lot of people would say wow you've gone mining on so many streams you know so many hours and you have this much iron to show for it all you have to do is spend this many hours selling an iron farm and you'd be so much better right and that's something I wanted to address in today's video why don't I do insert big project here that would make this thing so much easier, the thing that you no doubt want me to do on some level, why don't I just go ahead and do that? And let me explain with today's video. But first, I'm going to take a couple stacks of fine, I'm going to take my jungle wood, and I'm going to make myself a bunch of planks, then I'm going to take some redstone from my wonderful chest over here that people love the organization of. Uh, that's definitely what people say, they love the organization on this chest. Um, but yeah, basically we're going to take uh, some redstone, we're going to take some iron, we're even going to take some cobblestone, which is a resource that I actually am slowly depleting just for from my uh, absurd amounts of, uh, <laughs> just from the absurd amount of things I'm crafting with it. But yeah, I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna, oh, that creeper is getting closer and closer. But uh, I'm gonna take these things, I'm gonna make some pistons, because pro tip, the recipe for pistons, it's always weird to me. Every time I have to do it, I'm like, huh, it's wood, and it's cobblestone, two of the most abundant resources in Minecraft. And then it's redstone, also pretty abundant. And then iron, which is abundant, but not in the quantities you might need it. It's always like strange to me, it always seems a bit alien, but it's a fact, so fun fact. Anyway, let's make ourselves some pistons, which I apparently way overestimated the amount of uh, cobblestone. Anyway, I've made the entire thing into pistons now. I have a couple stacks of pistons. And you might say, why is this? But if you've seen the channel for a while, you'll actually know that it's a little bit of a ritual we do every now and then, where we, uh, you know, take some iron ore that's been smelted. Not all of it because I don't want to waste my entire iron supply on one project that realistically is way over abundance. And I want to work on something that's definitely over the top for something that most people don't care about, bamboo. That's right, I'm going to improve the efficiency of my bamboo farm at the same time as literally saying, oh yeah, I don't really have enough uh, you know, insert resource here of, of iron or gold off my gold farm broke. I'll offer a few different things. Why would I go through all of the effort of making all, you know, placing all of these pistons down, of making this bigger and more efficient and slightly better and just, I guess, more active? Why would I go through all of those steps when I could be focusing on different things? And that's an answer. Uh, that's a question with a really interesting answer, at least to me, and it's something I wanted to question, uh, answer in today's video. Although this would have been way easier if I actually not planted the bamboo first, so pro tip, if you're ever trying to grow bamboo on a mass scale, which you probably never should be, you should probably do it like that. Also pro tip, because every time bamboo comes up, people say, you can break it instantly with a sword. That is a uh, Java exclusive. Don't ask me why, I, I I wish I could tell you the reason, but it's just as fast as a uh, an axe on bedrock, and there there you go, now you know, I am in fact on bedrock based on the bamboo. That's how you can prove to, so that's how you can get on to prove that they're in Java or Bedrock. If they won't show you their, you know, their little icon on the top left or their coordinates or the fact that it says Minecraft when they pause, you can, you know, you can have bamboos and swords as your example if you really want to. It's a weird thing to do to people, but you're not, there's a lot of weird things to do to people that people do all the time and that people even enjoy doing. So you know what, you do your, you do you, they do them. And we can talk instead about uh, something I find interesting, which is the concept of not maximizing your life. Because <laughs> every single motivational lesson should be, and you know, often is, about how to get better things out of life. And that is the, the big message I always want to have sent into the world. That's the message that everyone should be sending into the world, because the more people can do more things of their life, the better we do as a species. We're a symbiotic species. The more each person does, the better the collective does. The less each person does, the worse the collective does. It's just, uh, you know, it doesn't take a genius to work out that that's true, I don't think at least. And uh, yeah, so, Obviously, it makes sense for the collective, but also on an individual level, like, hey, learning about why you shouldn't be successful, that's not a thing you have to do if you're not already there, right? And whereas the opposite is true of like, hey, a lot of people need to just have some nudge given to them, some push that just says, hey, you're valuable, and I think this is the reason why. Go do the thing, chap. And that's that's why I probably will spend uh, some decent amount of time in the future uh, just focusing on that. That was terrible, by the way. Um, but, you know, uh, that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is going to be talking about Amish people, which is something I really want to talk about. And I've been promising you a little for a little bit. So, yeah, let's talk about Amish people, shall we? Because, uh, yeah, I, I kind of see myself in this Minecraft world as being a little bit 
you know, like a combination of like super high tech in some very few specific ways. But I also like to play Minecraft a bit like an Amish person would. <laughs> and uh, that sounds insane, right, on the surface. Why would you want to do it that way? But the reason that I want to, you know, do things like this bamboo farm, the reason I like to do things like that is because I think that having, uh, you know, like the ability to choose to do what you want at any given point in time is way more fun than feeling like you have to do something because it's the most effective path. I think in real life you get dilemmas like that all the time. And the only answer to that dilemma in real life is of course you take the more efficient path 99% of the time, as much as you humanly can, because it'll lead to a better life overall. But the cool thing about Minecraft, the cool thing about being a game is even though it simulates a lot of parts of the real life, even though there are a lot of similarities between Minecraft and the real world, you can quite easily say, it's not a perfect parallel. It's not, it's not, you don't have to treat it like real life because it's a video game. In the end, you can argue it doesn't really matter. It matters the amount you want it to matter, which is beautiful, which is something I love about the game. It's something I always have to praise on some level. But at the same time, I think it's also important while we're here anyway, to kind of just acknowledge that like, yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, but feel, feeling like you're at the mercy of a giant crowd of people, feeling like you have to do something because someone suggests it to you. Maybe this is just me, but I have like an inherent rejection of suggestions. Uh, <laughs> like if someone tells me to do something, I'm like, no, get out of here. If I come up with the idea myself, even if it's the exact same idea, I'll be like, oh, what a what a great idea that's been come up with right there. But if I hear someone else tells the exact same idea, I'm like, no, 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 this, this will not do. This is not uh, okay. And I'll, uh, that's like a part of my brain being contrarian or whatever, right? But also on, on the same level, on the same, also I've done all the redstone already. I thought I had a lot more to do, but I, I guess it just renders in really weirdly. Like you can only see redstone like 10 blocks away from you for some reason. Huh, what an odd little fact. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's this, uh, and also you see it better from above than from below. What is the logic on that? I, I would love to know sometime, you know, if you're, that, like is this all done already? Or is it only done to a certain point? It's impossible to actually tell. Uh, I guess there's another way to tell if someone's on bedrock if their redstone disappears 10 blocks in front of them. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I guess we don't need to play for the redstone. We can work on the second thing today, which you guessed it, it's the giant, giant blob of endstone. I want to get this thing done and I feel like it it's a good it's a good thing to use to talk about important things like also uh, the other side of what I'm talking about, which is addiction, right? Oh, I found some more iron, how nice. Honestly, it's been so long since I put it in there. It's just, it's always a nice surprise when it comes out again. Anyway though, let me explain a little bit about this Minecraft world because I would describe this as like my purest expression of just what I want to do in Minecraft. I think this world is really important to me, both on a personal level, because it's just my little world. Uh, you know, I, I can do whatever I want here all the time. It doesn't really matter. It only affects one seventh of my channel's content. And if people don't like that, that's fine. Uh, you know, like you can choose to like it, you can choose not to. I like that it fills that niche, that little role. Um, but yeah, the uh, the other part of that is like, so I, I like to have uh, kind of full say how, how things uh, kind of go here, right? And I like it to be a pure expression of just like, so I can actually enjoy Minecraft and know what parts are good and what parts affect me and what parts don't. So many YouTubers gave up on Minecraft, uh, you know, this is why a lot of them faded out, right? But so many YouTubers gave up on Minecraft a long time ago um, and they just kind of play it for the sake of videos. And you can tell actually by, uh, you know, seeing what they're doing where they're like, oh, this thing, I just read the, you know, I Googled it 10 seconds ago and I'm saying the things that I literally just read in the Google. And you, you see that, uh, uh, you know, like sometimes, I don't think you see it as much with the, the new gen of Minecraft YouTubers, but you definitely started to see it towards the end, the old ones, and it's like, oh yeah, that's the thing I don't want to be. I want to enjoy Minecraft, and this world, whatever I need to do to enjoy it is what I'll do here. If I don't enjoy something, you better believe you won't see it here. But more than just that, more than like a weird personal tool of like a wonderful thing that I enjoy in the world that also is this actually, you know, somewhat beneficial sometimes. Like sometimes Let's Play episodes blow up and they get a bunch of views. Sometimes they get like 7,000 or something like that, which is still a lot of people to watch a video that does badly, right? So yeah, no, it's it's a it's a cool thing to see regardless. And I just want to kind of mention it as my point that a lot of people do things not because they're good ideas, but because of peer pressure and because of being recommended to. And obviously this is good as a society that we have some amount of that in us. But the reason that I'm such a contrarian all the time, even where it really doesn't make sense, the reason why if you tell me to do something, even if it's a good thing for me, I'm gonna immediately ignore you, is because of the fact that like, someone needs to do it, right? Someone in society needs to fill that role. Because, okay, there's so many examples of things I can name where they, they're not good because they're good, they're good because they're popular, and they strike the part of your brain that makes you wanna miss out. And you might say, 
say no to it, cat. You're being cynical. Um, but let me give you let me give you an actual example, right? So apps, you know, there's so many of them that do so many things. Everyone has their own idea for a billion dollar app. And you know what? Honestly, with the right marketing and branding and VC funders, you probably can find, uh, you probably can make a billion dollar app out of literally any idea. But in case you think that's just being cynical too, let me take the example of the app Yo. So everyone is so keen to get in on the next Facebook, the next Twitter, the next YouTube on the ground floor because investing in those companies now you get like a tiny share. Even if you invest millions in those companies, you're still worth, you know, like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent. So uh, yeah, like everyone wants to get on the ground floor where you can spend one million and get like 7% or something, uh, you know, because everyone wants to be invested in things that eventually grow big. Fun fact, that's how you can make money in the world. So a lot of people, and a lot of people who are on the social networks, they want to be on them early, like, oh yeah, I was on it before it was cool. I, um, my brother always brags about knowing the video Gangnam Style before it blew up. He was like, oh yeah, a friend just sent it to me, like, here's a wacky Korean video, and then it blew up. Like, everyone wants to be on something before it's cool, right? Like, the, the whole phrase of, like, before it was cool exists for that reason. So, uh, yeah, here's a social media app you probably didn't hear about. It was called Yo. It blew up. It got so much media coverage. There were, I don't know how many millions of users, but people started using this app that had the unique premise of you can only send the message yo. You, this sounds like a joke. This sounds like I'm making it up. But literally, um, the only thing you could do with the app was say the message yo, and then people could respond back yo. If they didn't respond yo to yo yo, they probably weren't down to hang out. If they did respond yo, you better believe they were down to hang out and do a whole bunch more. That was that was the premise behind the app, and it actually <laughs> it sounds like a joke, but it actually uh, you know it was like somewhat successful at, at launch at least, and it was valued in the tens of millions. Think about that by the way. When I say tens of millions, you might think oh yeah, but I mean, you know, what, what's Tesla worth? Some number of billions? No, compare that to the amount of money you will earn in your lifetime and, and you know, my lifetime too. Together, both our lifetimes are still not even scratching what this app became worth in the process of a week's, right? Like, this this app generated more value, you could argue, and you, you could look at that and say, oh, well, really, that proves why values are inflated and blah, blah, blah. But no, the fact that some number of people thought this was worth tens of millions, more than all of that stuff, that alone has a damning implication about, like, yeah, this was a huge thing. That was all because people thought it was a cool idea for someone else. Like, I look at that idea and I say, but I want to send actual messages to people or images or, you know, I, I like apps that have content. There's a reason I don't use Snapchat, right? The, there's a lot of, um, oh geez. Uh, there's a lot of people who are just like, you know what, Snapchat sounded dumb and it works with people. So if something else sounds dumb, it still might work if it has just the right idea in it. But that's not how that really works, right? There is There are some things that just inherently catch on and Yo was not one of them. In fact, okay, I looked it up just for this video because I was like afterwards like, huh. So how is Yo doing these days? Because it was worth tens of millions back in 20... I, I thought it was like last year, but it was actually five years ago. And it's like, oh yeah, no one's ever spoken about it since. But I decided to Google it. I wanted to do my due research on why you shouldn't just get in something because it seems popular. Again, do things that you want to do, not things that seem popular is a pretty good statement for life. And uh, to prove that one to you, in case you're like, you know, I'm not so sure about this. So um, the app, Yo, uh, not only did it <laughs> presumably not continue to get invested in the huge numbers, uh, it had to keep on changing their app to try and stay relevant. So they added location, they added links, they added a bunch of different things to it. And uh, yeah, interestingly enough, they eventually were running out of money and they're like, okay, the only way we can survive is if we go by Patreon. That's right. They decided to advertise in their app to everyone still using it. Hey, support us on Patreon if you want us to exist. Do you know how many people have supported their Patreon since March, by the way, March 30th. We're talking literally half a year ago as of a week from now, right? Um, as of next Sunday. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, how many people have supported it? Let me show you actually on the screen. This is a unique exclusive for the Let's Play. There is 47 patrons. Hello, by the way. Didn't intend to be here. 47 patrons. I've got like purple on my shirt. I, I spill drinks on myself sometimes and then I don't record myself. It's terrible. You're exposing the internet. And also I'm covering up the number of Patreons, I just realized. So. 47 Patreons. Patrons. Patrons? Pa it, people that use the Patreon thing. Uh, as an example, even one of my YouTuber friends who uh, doesn't promote it very much has 53 Patrons and you know, it's like a smaller, large channel uh, that doesn't promote it. This app that promotes it all over their thing, only 47 people found value in it. And even then, some of those might be accidental, right? Only 47 people actually enjoyed this app to put even a dollar towards it, right? And yeah, to me that shows the significance that it generated, the significance it had versus the significance people thought it had. It's one of the greatest examples, almost like the dot-com boom or whatever, of where a lot of a lot of things do have money, a lot of things do have society. People, not everyone can be a trend teller and work out what actually makes sense and what doesn't. We decide that as a collective, and sometimes we make really stupid decisions 
But yeah, that's why it's important sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it's important to do things because you think they're good things, not because <laughs> not because they're popular. And so yeah, I, I, I just want to use that as my example of like, look, sometimes people suggest things that I probably really should be doing that I don't have a great excuse for not doing. And sometimes people suggest things that I'm just like, that doesn't sound fun to- why would I do something that doesn't sound fun just to please this one stranger on the internet? Or even if it's ten strangers on the internet. Um, I- the, one, the cool thing about YouTube, the cool thing about this as opposed to any other media conglomerate, like any other celebrity, when their manager tells them to do something, they do it. It's a big disaster when they don't, right? It's a big fiasco where they're like, hey, I'm gonna actually say my opinions. Whereas on YouTube, like, yeah, whatever, I can- <laughs> I have the ability to turn down things I don't want to do. For example, I could talk about ad deals, maybe we'll do it later. Uh, I turn down a lot of ad deals that I see other YouTubers pick up, like the ones that go to everyone. Uh, Cause you know, there are, there are often huge things attached. I could actually, someday I should talk about like the inside of like uh, sponsored ads on YouTube. Cause there is, there's a lot of like, <laughs> there's a lot of interesting inside baseball stuff, but I, I won't dive into it now. Cause I want to talk about the other side of doing things, not because they necessarily make sense. And that would be like addiction, right? Because uh, I, I want to clarify for any of this. I have never been addicted to any drugs and this is mostly about non-drug addiction. However, if you don't like uh, addiction discussion or you know your kids are watching this, then tell tell them not to say, hey, another video for you. Unless you're down with them hearing this, in which case, aren't you a cool parent? But um, yeah, just this is, everyone always says when we talk about anything like, did you know your audience is 12 year olds? And I have to now clarify, hey, just in case you are a 12 year old, yay, don't, don't do this. And as if like, yeah, that's the magic thing. Like, you know what, you know what children love being told is that things are only for adults. That's that's what they listen to. That's what, you know, that, that's why I never watched South Park as a child. That's why uh, whenever something <laughs> was banned for being too gory, I didn't Im immediately go out of my way to try and play it. Yeah, that's that's not how things work. The Streisand effect isn't real. You should definitely try and censor things from children and trust that they can't make the, I, obviously, I don't think 12 year old is a child, but like, yeah, let's say, yeah, you should block things from, you know, people in their teenage years if they're in the lower end, because yeah, that saying that people can't make their own decisions, that's often what works out. That's a really good working strategy. So yeah, leaving that to the side because it's a it's a rant I have to deal with and then I have to deal with like the backlash to me ranting about again And I'm like, well, you know, well you are being the idiot. So I'm gonna keep on ranting at you um, so <laughs> But yeah, leaving that to the side for just a second I want to talk about addiction because some people have mentioned getting real help from some of these videos and one of the things that it took me so long to really absorb this lesson into my life and work out because, you know, like it's like I said before, I think the one thing I actually care about the most is trying to affect the most of you that I can in the most positive way that I can while talking about things that are actually enjoyable to me. Like, there, there, there are certain things I could say that would be useful to you but aren't actually, like, messages I care about. Like, eat your five a day. I didn't eat my five a day. I had sweet potato... Um, crisps or chips if you're in America. I had sweet potato crisps for lunch. That was one of my five a day and that might be my one for- actually I had a smoothie too. That's probably a, another- I, I don't think smoothies should count as one of your five a day but that probably counts too. I think every doctor with any nutrition to them is gonna be like, hey, that's no real vegetable in your day to day. But you know what? I didn't do it. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie and say, oh yeah, it's really easy to eat salads. They're so tasty. I love all the flavor they have. Cause no, that would be li me lying. That would be me messaging about something that I don't really believe in. But what I do find interesting and kind I believe in and that has I would say helped out my life some decent amount is um, understanding addiction and understanding what it really is because you get so many conflicted messages most from people who are like hey don't be addicted to anything it's it's bad but like at the same time there are lots of people with addictive personalities there are lots of people who inherently do attach to a thing and then it find it very hard to unattach how do you know when something becomes addiction and uh, yeah, I, I think obviously we're gonna leave drugs to the side mostly on this one But the reason the difference between because I used to think that oh, yeah Well the real thing that made certain things not bad and certain things bad is physiological versus physical wait Yeah, physiological versus it's like no sorry psychological versus physiological addiction. They're both really similar words I have to like picture them in my head. I'm sorry. I don't know fancy words. I'm not a real doctor I'm just a man on the internet apparently talking about addiction, but I used to think that the line between when something was bad for you and when it wasn't, is if you physically needed it to survive. Like, pro tip, there's lots of drugs, especially ones that are especially prevalent in America. Also in my area of the UK, fun fact. There is a lot of, there's a big drug problem here, so that's a nice thing to see every time I walk down the street. But, um, and obviously a much less nice thing for the people down the street. But, um, <laughs> fun story related to that too, by the way, in my bank. And I, I don't know if I've told that before. But yeah, let's uh, try and stay on track and say, 
that, yeah, I, I used to think that like, oh yeah, being physically addicted is the bad thing. Whereas you can be psychologically addicted to things and it's fine. Like, I'm psychologically addicted to making Minecraft videos. I'm psychologically addicted to playing Minecraft in this world and doing things how I kind of want. But it's kind of not a problem, right? No, I don't think any of you are looking at this and saying, hey, Toy Cat, you're addicted to Minecraft. You're addicted to making jokes about cave update stuff. You, you got to stop that right now. But why do you not say stop that? But you'd say I'm addicted to food or you'd say I'm addicted to... Um, you know, you can say I'm addicted to a whole bunch of other things. Let's let's just let's just make up a, a thing you want to. You can be addicted to so many different things, but you can't be addicted to things like video games. Except, can you? And I would say sort of, right? But then surely, you know, like, the link is like always then, so surely I'm addicted to video games. I play them every single day. I'm addicted to Minecraft. I play it every single day. And that's where, that's where the tricky thing, that's where most people just leave their brains, they leave them conflicted. But I recently, like, found a resolution internally to this. And if you want to hear the resolution, here's what I think it is. I think that addiction addiction isn't just enjoying something it's not even being psychologically addicted you can be psychologically addicted to lots of things and not uh, you know that's what discipline is the thing i was talking about last week and them not being bad but i think when it becomes bad when it becomes worth labeling as an addiction is when it affects the rest of your life negatively i'm addicted to minecraft let's say it right now i feel compelled to play this game most days but it is useful to my life. I, you know, I am a person who makes Minecraft videos, right? Playing Minecraft is actually quite beneficial to the rest of my life. If it wasn't beneficial, if I was a bank manager and I'm at the, the bank all day just playing Minecraft on my phone on the table, that would be a cause for concern because it's negatively affecting the rest of your life. The bar that everyone should be trying to set for themselves is not like, oh yeah, am I addicted to the thing? I mean, if you're using the wrong definition at least, it should be, does this negatively affect the rest of my life? So again, the drugs are the obvious example, but there's also all sorts of things that always come up that confuse people like, how can you be addicted to porn? How can you be addicted to these sorts of things? They're just enjoyable things. I mean, I don't understand how it's an addiction for those things. But the reason is because when that affects the rest of your life negatively, if that affects your partners, if that affects uh, your family, your friends, if everyone around you is entirely okay with you being a drug addict, like, you know, think of Sherlock, for example. Um, <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if it gets worse in the later seasons. I don't think I've watched the very latest one. But like, if you look at Sherlock in the BBC uh, version, uh, portrayal of him at least, um, then he is a drug addict, but all of his friends seem to be fine with it. And when they want to get him off it, when it starts to negatively affect them, that's when it becomes an issue. That's why, you know, you shouldn't look at that and say, oh, I'm gonna become a drug addict, as long as I'm a high functioning one. No, that's not, I mean, that's hopefully not the message I'm trying to put across. If so, I probably should, uh, <laughs> probably should be changing the message a bit. But no, um. That is a that is the actual thing I'd say. Like, oh yeah, when you negatively affect your life with anything and everyone around you in your life, that's when you need to kind of back off things. That's the and the reason that we call people addicts is because it has affected their life so bad that the number one trait about them, the most notable characteristic that you can say about someone who is a drug addict, is that they are addicted to drugs. It affects what they do all day, either you know looking for money or stealing or whatever. You know, like that's that's what most beggars are, right? Like when you see these people who are addicted to the level where it defines the rest of their life. They've lost their friendships, their relationships, because they just want to do this thing. That's why they are called drug addicts, because they are addicted to this stage where it, it is the most notable characteristic about them, to a stranger at least. I'm sure to their friends, they're still a good guy, but that's why you call them like that. That's why you can, uh, you know, like, you, you <laughs> I know, to get, give an example. I know. I, I choose to be a Minecraft, uh, you know, video maker, YouTuber, whatever, right? Uh, but most people don't choose to be drug addicts. Most people would not look at that and say, that is a desirable circumstance, and that is why making, keeping clear what your goals are is important to avoid an accidental addiction to a thing that isn't good for you. Because knowing what's good for you in the abstract is really, really crazy hard, right? No one really ever knows um, if they're addicted or not. And uh, yeah, uh, like, cause obviously you start just finding things yourself. Everyone thinks they're the good person internally. I, I met someone recently who insisted they're a good person. Are they a good person? I don't know for sure. Am I a good person? I don't know for sure. That should be your default answer, by the way. Pro tip, like, <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, you should generally speaking, try and be aware of what you want to do in the world so that when you do something, you know if it lines up. Because, you know, there's two parts of your brain. There's the most immediate part and there's, I forget the actual names, it's like the id and the ego, but you, you've got to try and keep the long-term planning part of your brain happy by making and following long-term plans. 
Or when that long-term planning thing activates, it'll be like, hey, all you did today was play Minecraft and the other things I've mentioned today. Maybe you do all of the addictive things I've mentioned and it's like, yeah, you should you should do something else, man. And that's when you've got to realize, oh yeah, that's that would be an addiction. That could be an actual genuine Minecraft addiction um, if you're doing it at the expense of other things. And now you know that, hopefully that saves at least one of you from being addicted to something that isn't always called addictive. Like, again, an example would be like, um, I know gambling, or even gambling in video games, right? There's a lot of games that now have gambling mechanics in them, which, you know, I obviously have thoughts about. Maybe maybe you have your own too, and if those thoughts are not negative, I'm very confused uh, by your opinions in the world. But um, yeah, some people are genuinely addicted because it's just like, oh yeah, I enjoy it in the moment, and then they enjoy it in the next moment, and the next moment, to the stage where it affects a lot of moments very, very negatively. By the way, I said I don't want to be a drug addict, but literally as I was saying it, I realized like, oh man, I hate to contradict myself. Like a, again, one of the fun things about these let's plays is like halfway through, I'll contradict myself about something else I'm saying. But um, I just realized this this is really stupid and this is <laughs> this is a bad like life lesson to follow. But I actually, I once had a friend. Uh, in fact, I, again, I've said before, I live in an area that I don't know if it's just now got a drug problem or if that was the whole time, but a lot of people in my universe were crazy addicted. One of them is dead now, by the way. Pro tip, like one of my close friends, like one of the first people I bonded with that didn't go to my school, one of the first people I made as like an individual guy, he's just dead. He, he killed himself after a, a long uh, bout on something. But that's that's not the point. That's uh, it, it, it doesn't actually uh, hugely negative. Uh, again, like it's it's tragic, but the, the lead up to it, the things that happened before, the amount of bridge burning that happened kind of already lightened the ground. I could talk about that some other time, like how you're meant to feel pity people even Oh, not PTP, how, how you meant to feel bad people, but there should be a stage where we say, hey, no, you you weren't worth, like, there, there, there are some people, uh, you know, we shouldn't pretend that everyone's great when, they, when they're dead. Like, you know how when someone dies, they always get that angelic photo of them in the media? That's not accurate for everyone. There are some monsters that die. There is, you know, there has been a situation where like, oh yeah, this guy was literally, uh, you know, like, I don't know, what, what terrible things can you do? He was those terrible things that you're imagining right now. And he died, and what a great thing for the world it was. Obviously, we shouldn't print those sorts of stories, and it shouldn't be, like, a, a big thing. But someone has to, like, sometimes bad people do die accidentally, and it's not worth cheering about. I think it's still a tragedy, but it's also a thing that happens, right? It's a it's a thing we've got to... If we, if we pretend that when everyone dies, they become fine, then I feel like we lose some of the system of, like, oh, yeah, but also there should... You know, like, it's one of the built-in human punishments for bad behavior. You behave badly then your impact on the world is negative and people will remember that in a wholly negative way. Anyway though, um, <laughs> leaving that to the side, to go on my side. Um, so yeah, there's a big drunk problem in my area. So a lot of people in my universe were uh, big into that when I was growing up. That's maybe part of why uh, I'm I'm not one of those people that just like dismisses like, oh yeah, all people who do all, all, all sorts of drugs are just always bad people. Cause you know, these are people I knew before and then after the things happened to them. And uh, yeah, there was one guy uh, that I didn't know before. I just, uh, you know, like <laughs> a lot of my friends used to go around his house when we were doing a thing together. Uh, not for any drug related stuff, by the way. I'll, I'll be honest if that was a thing. I, it's not a thing I talk about in this channel, but it wasn't related. I'll uh, tell you that 100% honestly. So um, yeah, I, I was around uh, this this guy's house. This guy who, I, I don't know what his life story was, but it, it seemed, I think to any like uh, neutral observer, it was a tragic house, but I was like fully in love with this house. Like this was the most, sad, depressing house in the world, and I was like, I love this. This is, this is a house, I am jealous I don't live here. I wanna make an application to be the roommate or something. And to tell you a little bit more about it, in case you're like, oh, you saw a sad house, what does that really mean? So picture like, I guess it was an apartment, not a house. Uh, so it was like a, uh, probably a, yeah, one bedroom apartment, maybe a two bedroom apartment. In the, um, the bedroom was just a mattress on the floor with like a tiny, not even a chest of drawers, like a, a picture a smaller version of a chest of drawers. I don't know what it's called. Um, there was a tiny version of a chest of drawers and there was a TV on it that was hooked up to a laptop. The second time I went, the, the chest was gone alongside the laptop, by the way, um, as, as you might imagine what happened there. Um, so then, you know, the, the dining room, the, the area everyone actually uh, hung out when they weren't with the man and his uh, girlfriend in the bedroom. Uh, that room just had three chairs in the table. Don't know how that happens, by the way. There was a snake cage about a snake in it. I don't know if that meant there was a snake loose or what. I asked and the guy was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, there was uh, the bathroom was like I I don't even know how anyone used that bathroom. It was like so ridiculously filthy it became cool again. You know, like uh, I I was like and I was enthralled by the fact that someone could live in this place on a regular basis and find that cool. That was like a free easy going lifestyle. And in fact uh, there was a big bit. Okay, this is this is the most ridiculous bit because again I, I don't know why I was looking around, but my my friends 
uh, were doing it as well. I think it wasn't rude based on the fact that they were doing it. Um, but yeah, there was this just big board that had like every single bill he received and they were getting more and more urgent as you went from top to bottom. Like, oh yeah, please pay this bill by this date. We will cut off the water unless you pay by this date. Uh, urgent final notice, giant red letters like all over basically. Uh, in fact, actually, you know, I think the inspiration to not pay my water bill was probably from that board where I was like, oh, they can't do anything about it besides send letters. You know what's more valuable than, than having received letters? Money. I love, I love me some cash. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, I guess I'm the one person in the world that's ever looked at a, a drug addicted lifestyle and be like, you know what? It's not all bad though. Uh, but yeah, most people don't. Most people look at that and they say that's, <laughs> that's horrendously sad, right? And I'm glad that I don't live a lifestyle like that. Uh, and the reason that you can, that, the way you can avoid something like that. Also, no, 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 no. Oh man. Come on guys. I, I think I did that actually. Okay, as long as the villagers there are safe. That's all that counts. I'm gonna light this area up. I feel like I don't want I don't want this to happen anymore. Especially not to Ice Cat. Ice Cat doesn't deserve this stuff, you know? So let's just light this whole area up because mobs don't spawn on ice if I'm not mistaken. So as long as we light up all the area up to the ice, we should be good in the end. As long as none of the ice melts, of course. But again, whole separate issue. Uh, there we go, look at that. So, so much nicer, no more dead villagers. And I'm hoping we actually get some more of them to breed. Because I've only got one jungle villager now, and he looks very moody, just kind of chilling there. You doing good, man? I'm doing good. Anyway, the reason that all came about, uh, I've actually left out the part of the story. I, I slept on, don't ask why I was sleeping there that night. I think maybe like, for whatever reason, we were all staying around at that house. And because there was only the one mattress in the one room where there was sleeping space, I, I don't know why there was broken glass in the corner, why no one cleared it up. And I don't know why I looked at that and thought, you know what, this is as good a place as any to go to sleep. But I totally slept in, in the corner of a cold room, because he didn't have heating, because obviously that gets cut off when you don't pay for it a certain amount. Uh, in, a, in a cold room in the corner on some broken glass. And that wasn't actually real bomb. That was actually a, a pretty okay day. But um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a terrible story overall. And maybe that's your life advice. So maybe that just made a lot of you be like, yeah, actually, maybe it would be cool. Oh, didn't want to do that. Maybe it would be cool to uh, do that. But I, I hope that isn't the point I raised there. Uh, but what is the point is that, yeah, <clears throat> letting any one thing define the rest of your life is where a lot of people have problems. This is why um, there are so many different tiny things that I kind of rally against. And that, but the basic umbrella is like, try not to let one thing define you. You are a person, you consist of lots of different things. And sometimes there are even some parts of society, people who have let their one thing define them, who'll be like, oh yeah, you totally should let this one thing define you. You are uh, sick in this particular way. <clears throat> well, you know, that is who you are now. I can't count the number of people I've met who are really cool and really motivated when you meet them and super hyped and excited. And then they're like, oh yeah, well the, the thing is, is I actually, this is like, this is the only thing I can do. Uh, you know, I, I can't actually do, you know, work because of X, Y, Z. And there are some lots of genuine cases. I, I always want to clarify, there are illnesses that are debilitating, but there are also lots of ones that are like bad and that you can get an out on. So let, let me give an example. So today uh, is the last day that I can record before flying to New York. Fun fact, right now I'm in somewhere in the uh, Philadelphia, no, Pittsburgh. What's the name of that state that they're both in? Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. You know the one. It's called PA. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm somewhere in that state area. I don't know precisely where. Uh, I'll, you'll have to find out on my Twitter, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm somewhere in that area. So therefore, I have to do some stuff before I can go there. Or you know, there's some downside to the channel if I just don't upload for. Uh, you know, as many days because I meant to record a Let's Play and I didn't do it in time. But I got incre- I don't know what, what happened, like, uh, I don't know, I, I shared some straws with someone yesterday, maybe that's what it is. Maybe plastic straws are having their revengeance and that's what's happening here. I, I, I don't know for sure, I got like wild- I'm wildly, wildly, wildly fatigued. I hurt everywhere. After this, I'm literally going to lay down and I'm just gonna enjoy what it feels like to have nothing in my ears and eyes. Because I also have my face cam light on because I forgot to turn it off before recording. There's a bright light shining into my eyes as I'm recording this. But you know why I'm doing that? It's not like some weird form of self-harm, at least I hope it's not. Um, it's because like there are, uh, sometimes you're thrown an obstacle and that's kind of what some things are, right? You've got to, it's all about being able to overcome the obstacles or at least making sure that you know which obstacles you're meant to overcome. Life throws so many little challenges your way and if you're not selective about which ones to do and if, if you're not, if, if you kind of get out of some of them sometimes, you can end up in a bad place. And that's why it always bums me out when I hear, uh, sometimes it's YouTubers, sometimes it's um, you know, people from my real life. Uh, I, I, one of my uh, first girlfriends, the one from the, the Cube World streams that I cringe at every time I watch, uh, you know, same thing was just like, oh yeah, I have a, a thing. What is the thing? Oh, it's not been diagnosed by anyone. 
But I swear, I really don't like working when I go somewhere. And it's like, that, that doesn't sound very specific at all. And <laughs> I, I, you know, I, what I will just say, actually, I'll say uh, there was some fraud involved, involving the government and uh, like legitimate, like whatever. Anyway, a whole separate side, side note on a side note on a side note on a side note. Uh, let's talk about the final thing here today. Cause I said I'd talk about ad strategies a little bit and I don't want to talk about all the inside details today, but I do want to talk about something um, kind of big that happened like about six months ago because um, I, I have this new strategy towards doing sponsored videos. Uh, if you don't know, uh, people get, especially if you're a gaming YouTuber, because we have the uh, the best audiences on YouTube in terms of selling to consumers. Like, if you want a new app, if like you know, if you want to launch an app where you just say yo to people, you know who you need promoting it. You need gaming YouTubers because most of the audience is somewhere in the late teens to the early. Um, early 20s, basically people with disposable income that are really influenceable. Because you know you know the reason we're also influenceable? Because uh, I'm also in my early 20s. Uh, the reason we're influenceable as a group, assuming that you're also in that group, is because we don't know the way the world works yet. And all you have to do is convince us the world works this way, and you just don't know it yet, you idiot. You didn't know that you meant to be playing Raid Shadow Legends? <laughs> you fool. Um, my controller battery's low, apparently. I really, I should fix that now, eh? Nah, let's just wait till it dies entirely. That seems like a strategy that has no, no way it can go badly whatsoever. Uh, should I go to sleep, by the way? I think I should. Oh, that's that's a good example. If I if my controller died there, would have literally just died. Yeah, that's. I'll go change the batteries. But yeah, when you're selling to most markets, you have to convince them why this product is a good thing for their life, right? You have to convince me why I should switch shampoos. Not that you know, when when you're like 40, you're probably not switching shampoos. Maybe if there's a really great monetary reason, or you can tie into something else, great. Uh, you know, like you have to have things about these greater things of like honor and there's so many weird things about marketing to old people because they have a lot of money but also they're pretty rigid in their patterns so you want to rather than marketing to old people you market to young people and hope that it carries through to their old age instead of trying to get the 40 year old switch shampoos get an entire generation of young people to you know be on the the shampoos that are you know the ones that you're hoping will go big and then that'll last you for all those years so fun fact that's why you're so valuable and that's why a lot of people offer me a lot of money to uh, sell you things, and you might have noticed, I don't take up most of them, and why is that? Because I, I, I know there's like always two sides to this. One side is, you sold out, man, and the other side is like, so you're turning down free money, question mark? Because <laughs> it seems like basically free money, right? Like, all I have to do is make some weird endorsement. But no, the reason I don't is because I have very strict, guy like, I have, I have very strict rules I impose on myself, uh, as well as like following the law, which so many people don't do. Man, this like, this blows my mind as a YouTuber. You have the option to say, hey, that breaks the law. You have to remove that from the contract. And they choose to keep it in there. Like you, you legally have to disclose your ads. And if someone tries to force you not to, you can tell them that's not okay. And they're like, you know what? I just, even, sometimes it's not even in the contract. Sometimes there's no contract telling them to do that. Cause a lot of ad companies are smart and don't want to be uh, on the end, wrong end of a lawsuit, and the YouTubers will still lie because they think it maintains their credibility. It does the opposite. When you lie to your audience, they know that you're a liar. When you lie to people on a consistent basis, they know you lie to them. I don't know how that's like this hidden strategy, like pro tip, if you're making YouTube videos, don't lie to the people that you rely on for a livelihood. But for some people, it apparently is. And um, yeah, the reason I have that little rant is because yeah, one of the things is like disclosure is a thing in there. I have to say this was, uh, you know, this was brought to you as, as a paid advertisement, hashtag ad, etc. That's that's a requirement. The other thing is it actually can't be a thing that negatively uh, doesn't affect, negatively unaffects your life. If there is a game that's wildly filled with, um, I know what's, what's a game that ruins it. Like I think the Call of Duty series, if it has those loot boxes in there, then I am not down to play it generally, or down to play, pay it for play. A lot of YouTubers got big Fortnite deals and got big uh, Call of Duty deals, especially in the Minecraft world too, which I found odd. Um, and yeah, there's a part of me that's like, well, I mean, the, this doesn't necessarily, I think maybe Fortnite could have a positive impact on some of yours' life. I was actually playing it on my, you know, my own free accord for live streams, so maybe that's why I didn't get paid money, which is kind of ridiculous, right? Like, I could have got paid money to play Fortnite if I wasn't doing it for free, so that's a weird little side note there. But yeah, there's a lot of companies that try to reach out with a lot of different deals. I turned down, I would say, 90 to 95% of them. Anything to do with, like, a server, especially on Java, I usually turn down, um, because, you know, like, the offers are usually really weird and convoluted, and they're not that great, and you have to deal with people who have, like, weird ego issues. I, I've just learned, don't deal with Minecraft servers. Most Minecraft server owners are insane. <laughs> or the ones with money, at least, are insane. I, they either ha they're they insane, or they think that, like, you know, $7 uh, and, a, and a pinky promise is, uh, is the way you make a business deal. I don't know. But, um, yeah, the other thing about it is... Um, 
So I, t I turn down most deals unless it is it does fill those categories. And even then, I've decided like, you know what? Doing a sponsored video a month, which I could easily do and you know, make how many thousands that would be. Uh, you know, like a part of me much prefers the idea of like, hey, what if I do fewer, better sponsored deals? So this is my new approach. I'm gonna tell you now publicly, because if you're watching this, you're probably not an ad executive. If you are, please don't tell your company this. But um, <laughs> my new strategy is genuinely, because uh, this is what I've always done in business. The re um, so I've always worked freelance, right? You know that, like I used to sell ads. If I didn't want to work with a customer, if they told me something, like if they had strict requirements or something I really didn't want to do, I would just quote them an insanely high price. Hope, because it's it's a win-win, right? Like, let's say um, it was meant to be, you know, $50 for an ad deal, but I really didn't want to work with this guy. For whatever reason, I'd be like, oh yeah, that'll be 200. And, <laughs> you know, if they turn me down, heck yeah, don't have to work with them. If they take me up on it, heck yeah, just made four times as much money. Um, than I otherwise would have made because I kind of don't want to deal with that person. That's, by the way, why weddings are so expensive. I'm sure if you've ever been involved with a wedding, you know, like, oh yeah, things cost a bunch of money. Most of it is just like, yeah, because when you're a wedding, you're going to be a little bit of a monster towards the people who expect you expect things from because it has to be perfect. It's your, you know, your one lucky day. But to them, it's just another client and therefore it costs a bunch more because you're more demanding for the same services. And uh, yeah, so fun fact, I what I do now is for every single deal, except the ones I really, really insist on doing, like um, I'm probably allowed to say this, I hope so, if I'm if not, I'm saying anyway. So many people have requested I play Trove. Uh, I still did the crazy rival. <laughs> I actually, I still did it for that actually. But then like they, they came down to like half of what I asked for and I was like, huh, okay then. <laughs> I guess I can bridge the thing there if you uh, you add in this small thing there and if we, again, always has to be a favorable contract in terms of I'm not making up, I'm saying things I actually like about things. I'm not I'm not using your talking points like you'll, you'll notice. Oh, okay, if you, if you watch a lot of YouTubers and they're all um, playing the same, uh, you know, game sponsored all of a sudden, you'll notice they say the same things because you always get a list of talking points that you have to like negotiate down. It's a whole, again, there's there's a whole side of YouTube that's business that I, I just hate dealing with. So I say, hey, uh, unless you're willing to give me, uh, you know, a lot of digits with a big number at the front, then that, and it's worked for me quite well actually. Because fun fact, okay, the reason this first came about is because um, last year I was really, really, really struggling. Um, no, no, I wouldn't say struggling. Struggling probably implies like, oh yeah, uh, could have been out in the street any minute. I don't, I don't ever imply that like, uh, you need to give me money or I'm gonna die. That's, I don't think that's a good thing to do. Even when it is the situation, it still doesn't feel right to me. But anyway, um, so I, uh, I've uh, always uh, had the impression that like, okay, so things are, things are going badly on the YouTube end here. I kind of need a sponsored deal to get to the income that I need to do this. Basically just to like, you know, to stabilize things. And I got this offer for a game that I really didn't like the sound of. And I was just like, hey, uh, literally 10 times the amount. I would usually ask for. Uh, I if I could tell you. I, I'll tell you for this. Actually, wait. I'll just say there's a ludicrously expensive thing I've always wanted to do. Um, it's an airline. If you you could probably guess if I say it's an airline and it's ludicrously expensive. I've always wanted to do it. But um, if you know your airline stuff. But I was like, okay. So for for the cheapest version of that thing I can do, uh, you know, it turns out that this is enough to cover that. And I was like, okay. So I'll throw that offer out there and hopefully they don't reply, but they were and they're like, okay, we're gonna do this. I made this great video. Again, I made a really good sponsored video that I think would have converted so many people to this game. And then you know what they said in return? You know what, you know what they thought? They're like, hey, this really funny part of the video, our client thinks it might be showing them in a negative light. Also, can you show off this feature? We feel like you didn't say it well enough. It's like, well, it, you, the, this is a Minecraft channel, sir. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically they ruined the video over and over again. And that's why I was like, okay, so I'm gonna just put that money in a little little box somewhere and I'm gonna use it to do something really, really nice. Because originally my plan is always, uh, I kind of told that story out of order. My, my original plan is always like, hey, save that, put it in a big box. One day when YouTube ends, I'll appreciate that for some reason a company gave me how many uh, you know, thousands of dollars. I'll, 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 be, I'll be real with you. Like, it's, uh, it's, it was something like five, but then after taxes, it's way less. But um, it was a huge, it was a huge amount of money. And it was something I did uh, solely for the reason that like, okay, it's crazy, but this allows me to do something cool. And I think that's my new, uh, that's my new, that's my new uh, like ethical guideline. Like, hey, if I'm just doing this for the sake of, I feel like I should be doing brand deals, I'm not gonna do a thing. I need to like a product and then also, it needs to allow me to do something cool that otherwise couldn't. Because again, that that thing, again, that if you know, I'm, I'm sure if I, I'm just gonna say 5,000 again, like that is such a huge amount of money. When does that, ev when do you ever get paid 5,000 to anything? That is literally make a life-changing decision money, right? Like uh, some people would make life-changing decisions for less amount of money and 
the fact that that was just a thing uh, that allows me to now do something, which again, I'm, I'm very excited about. We'll vlog it on the second channel sometime next year. Uh, people are gonna be very mean to me and I'm gonna have to clarify, like, I, I got the money from a random Chinese company. I don't know why they gave it to me. I don't know what this whole thing happened is, but yeah, it's gonna be fun. But yeah, the, the kind of guideline I've kind of got myself now is I wanna make sure that everything I do here on YouTube has some genuine benefit uh, to the viewers, or at least enough to me that I think people will enjoy it. The cool thing about streaming I've noticed is people actually do care about my well-being. That's why um, there are so many things that I try to do to make myself less of an insane and more of a better rounded person, I would say. Because people actually do it. I, maybe this is just my audience and maybe it's because of the honesty. I, I don't know what it is. I could just be insanely lucky and if so, thank you very much to everyone who has made this possible. But the fact that, uh, I, I, no, the fact that I even feel comfortable telling you that. No YouTuber would ever share a number um, like that. And the reason is because there's gonna be a comment. There's, there's gonna be one on this video. I'm, I'm, I trust it's not the majority reaction. There's gonna be like, wow, that much money and you don't even give this much to India? Or that much money and you still do X or Y? Or like, you still have the goal to put ads on videos or sell merch? Which, I don't sell merch, by the way. I, I do, but I, I don't ever promote it. It's, it's kind of like I've got to get a new merch thing that I actually care more about. It's <laughs> separate note, but I basically don't sell merch. You've never, uh, you know, I don't do the, hey, have you heard about Tuba Simulator or my shirts? Or, hey, I'm wearing this shirt in this video and I'm gonna mention it later and make it seem like if you don't get it, you're not cool like me. You'll notice that's not a thing that I do ever uh, because just uh, doing something because it feels like you should isn't actually a great reason to do something. Anyway, so um, is this a perfect square? I really genuinely don't know. Because I measured it and it seems like it's 51 by 49, but I think they're all 51 by 49. And it, ga it gave me a little bit of a genuine like nervous attack of like, is that true? Are they all not cubes? So what I'm gonna have to do now, I'm gonna waste a lot of fireworks on this, but it's worth it to save me a lot of fenstone placing. Oh, we can walk from the top. Okay, that's how we'll do it. That's how we'll do it. We'll make a little pathway that goes perfectly diagonally. Okay, one, two, three, four, Five. Okay, I proved it is a square, but I proved it's a square at the top. It could still be Oh no, it couldn't still be wide if it was Oh no, because it could be taller than it is. No, if it's if it's this square, that's all that matters, I think. So let's do one more check. Oh no. Oh no, I think it is one off. So it's one block off being a perfect cube, as best I can tell. Uh unless something's gone horribly wrong there. Uh, we are one block off being a square, which I guess we can still fix now, right? We are still in the phase where that is very much a fixable issue. Because all we have to do is place our thing one block to the right there. Oh, and that's what we are gonna do. Yeah, probably. Wait. Let's fly over there. Let's see if this... Oh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do it anyway. Okay. Are we good? We are good. We are good. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> It's a perfect square. We can continue with our day. But yeah, I wanted to uh, come out and say that because I kind of changed my view on ads. I used to be like, oh man, it's such a great way for YouTubers to supplement their income and to, you know, kind of get away from the uncertainties of YouTube. But the more it's happened, because there are so many influencers and because so many are willing to just break rules, <laughs> even when they're not required to, because it's like such a ridiculously competitive market, it's become something where you're asked ridiculous things. And if you can turn, sometimes if you turn them down, it's like, well, you're gonna get the money pulled. And it's like, this this shouldn't be the case. And I, I don't wanna be beholden to some giant company about when and why I'm making videos. Uh, which is why, yeah, even um, I have a partnership that is expiring this month. I can't say what it is for legal reasons, but you know, you might have noticed that I've done two ad reads so far and there's gonna be one in the next few days. Hope that's all okay, by the way. Um, but yeah, cause I thought it'd be something that really helped because I make server videos, people will know, wanna know how'd you get a server, etc. Again, it, it could be anything but servers. I mean, servers like the tables, not like Minecraft servers, of course, cause I think I might be uh, saying something I shouldn't there. But um, yeah, no, uh, like there's a lot of things like that. It's just like, it's not fun to be on someone else's schedule. Cause to be accountable to someone who doesn't have your viewers' interests at heart. And that's what I wanna have. I want this to be a symbiotic relationship where you helping me helps me help you and me helping you helps me help me. More than, oh yeah, you guys are the pay pigs that <laughs> sucker enough to stay around here and watch these terrible things. Cause a lot of people don't even like the things they make by the way. That's a whole separate crisis we can talk about sometime. But um, yeah, basically I just wanted to say today, if, oh man. How's it going, zombies? But I wanted to say at least uh, somewhere today that, yeah, I, I, I recently changed my policy on it just because, like, again, previously I was one of the more, I guess, let's call it conservative in terms of 
how I make my, how I pick my ads and how, how I decide to turn a lot of them down or whatever. Uh, I was probably one of the guys on YouTube that did the fewest of them in terms of the ones they're offered. But I want to also just be clear and say, you know, but even the ones that I was taking, sometimes they they negatively affect me and to some extent, uh, I don't think they uh, most of them affect you, but I think it's something I want to make sure that everyone benefits in the same way. And maybe that's a stupid decision that's going to cost me thousands and thousands of dollars, but I prefer to make the one that is better for the content in the end. And that's why I did it. Or maybe that's just you. Maybe maybe I'm making that up as a explanation for likes. So, uh, accidentally burned my biggest advertising client by revealing all the details of our contract on stream and uh, on, on the Let's Play. This isn't a stream. I'll be honest here. I'll be 100% real with you here. The Let's Plays do feel a lot like a live stream to me. Like, they've got a lot of the same... I feel like I'm in the same space for it, you know? Like, let's chill. Let's hang out. Let's talk about the real things, you know? Let's, let's talk about, I don't know, my unresolved uh, conflicts with... Uh, trust and the reasons they came about, eh? Let's let's go for a more, shall we? But um, <laughs> I don't know. Like um, I, I think it is a, a fun a fun space. I feel like I am talking to friends here, which by the way is gonna get me into trouble sometimes because I'm talking to people I I believe that I trust. There is somehow, whether for good reasons or bad, there is some trust between me and the audience that watches these in the live streams. Sometime that's gonna get me in some trouble because I say something that is genuinely useful and is in the confidence of people I trust and someone's gonna come in and be like, oh, this is really negative to, to this community right here. Because, you know, right now on the internet, it literally is, there are no defined rules. Someone can find offense to something you said years ago, even when that thing didn't exist and there was no way anyone could have been aware of it. And they can say that you're an ignorant something or other. And uh, yeah, I, know I could talk about cancel culture a whole, whole video. Do you wanna hear that? Do you wanna talk about the inside? Uh, do you want to talk about how it feels to be like a, a public figure during the years of like, uh, you know, like everyone being cancelled and everyone being called out and like, you know, there's a very, there's a big train that is very anti uh, people with power, which is, you know, good in a lot of ways. I think it's good to speak the truth to the power. I think it's good to uh, know, uh, to make the power accountable or whatever. But I also think sometimes it goes the whole opposite way. And you, instead of making people accountable, you make people... Uh, make bad decisions for everyone involved. And that's not a generally good thing. Because, uh, oh, you know, okay, um, <laughs> this is uh, this is unconfirmed, which is why I'm not going to talk about it in any real depth. But, like, another YouTuber in the Minecraft space, let's be honest, in the child's Minecraft space, had a huge controversy that might have been real, might not have been. That's, we, we don't know until... Th there isn't any official way to know, I guess. And it's one of those things that's just like, man, I don't... I don't, I don't like this, this at all. I think this is a great example of, like, something that should be called out maybe. Uh, and it, it gets lost because people are so focused on like, you know, but when he did the terrible thing to the to the, to the the person, I mean, did he use any, uh, you know, like, I don't know, uh, any racial phobic, any transphobic language or did he use correct pronouns at all times? It's like, no, but we should, we should be caring about the fact that he might have done something horrific and endangered. No, 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 but you know, what language did he use? Were, were there microaggressions in there? It's like, oh God, you goddamn guys. Like, <laughs> uh, and yeah, this happens all the time where you can get away with, you can get away with terrible things by appearing good on the surface. And, you know, oh, that ties into the thing I've been watching a week, because this has been a big part of my week. Um, again, I am sick. I, w I want to die. I don't know why I keep talking to you. I just I just want to share things. Is, is that is that normal? Is this is this like a, a sign of something bad? I, I hope not. But, um, yeah, I want to share things with you. And I want to share the fact that I've been watching The Boys on Amazon Prime. There are very few shows that I'm like, this is so good, you have to watch it. But as someone who's, like, on the anti-superhero movie train, but also I like superhero movies, you know, like, I watch them. And then I, I think, like, why did I, I watch that? It was good, but, I mean, was it that good? That, that's, that's where I'm at. The Boys is perfect, and I won't spoil anything besides saying, what if superheroes, but they were real people and not, you know, imaginary concepts? And there's the whole struggle with, like, but if there are superheroes, what does that mean for the rest of us? Etc. Et there's really good, there's really good stuff in Amazon Prime's The Boys. Uh, get it right now. Oh, wait, I can turn this into... So let me give you an example of, like, one of the few things I would... I, I used to do this, even though I've never been paid more than, like... In the entire lifetime of my channel, it hasn't added up to $100 yet. Let me clarify. This is not my big payday that I'm selling you out to. Because every time I think you sign up for Amazon Prime using my link, 
Uh, pro tip, ukamazon.ibxtoycat.com or usamazon.ibxtoycat.com, depending on whether you live in the UK or the US. If you sign up using my link, I think I get like $3. Very few people have ever done it, but I feel good because it's like, yeah, Amazon Prime is a thing you need. I get that, you know, I, I think actually these days, like, the world is against Amazon. But what you can't be against is Amazon service, right? Like, they provide, uh, you know, you get free shipping and also tea. You can watch The Boys and also get popcorn delivered in, you know, next day delivery to watch The Boys. But does Netflix do that? No, Netflix, uh, you just get a show and then... You get a show. That's that's the whole of Netflix. With Amazon, you get your music covered. You get you get Kindle stuff. I, I don't know how they cover so much in one subscription, but Amazon Prime is like one of the few purchases in my life that I'll never. Uh, the the day I got it and the the day right now, they're uh, you know they're two beautiful days. Uh, there, there's been an unbroken chain of love ever since then. And even if it doesn't pay me any significant amount of money, if you use that link. Then I'll get free whole dollars, which are, I don't even know why I promote. You know, don't use my link. You know, use my, my link is a thing that exists, but don't use it. Just watch the boys anyway. It's that good. It's so good. It's worth watching, even if I have no financial incentive, because I basically don't regardless of whether you use the link. So yeah, get yourself some Amazon Prime. Go watch the boys, and uh, yeah, wouldn't, that that can be a homework for next week. We'll talk about it some more then, because like the ending's really like stuck with me, and it's fascinating. So maybe it's fascinating to you too, or maybe you think that. Minecraft YouTubers should talk more about Minecraft and less about, um, I guess, drug addiction and... Oh, drug addiction ties into the boys as well. Spoiler alert. Haha, <laughs> checkmate. Sorry. Um, but no, thank you very much for watching this video. I am pretty much done with the cube now. If this was... Okay, I'm going to be real with you here. I know that on an on objective level, I need to finish this and be like, I finished it in the time I was gone. But I think it genuinely might kill me to do so. So... You can you can take your pick about whether I should do that, but I'm gonna go lay down in a dark room and <laughs> I want it all to go away. And I hope that you are not laying down in a dark room and want it all to go away. But if you are, then good news. I'm about to go away and see you all next time. Goodbye.